we're now at the stage in our studies on tensor calculus where we can actually start doing calculus on tensors. But in order to be able to perform calculus on tensors, we need some way to find their derivatives. And ideally, the derivatives of those tensors will also transform like tensors. But I'll show you that if we take simple derivatives of tensors, we'll end up with something that's a bit more complicated. Let me demonstrate how. Suppose I have a tensor with a contravariant rank of 1 that I'll call t. Because it's contravariant, the components of t I'll write using t super i, because remember, that's how contravariant components are written, using superscripts. Suppose also that I had a coordinate system in Rn, which was defined by the coordinates x super i, where i is some free index from 1 to n. Rn, by the way, denotes the n-dimensional real space. And finally, suppose that my tensor t is defined at each point in this coordinate system so that its components actually depend on where in the coordinate system I'm sitting. So for each point in the space I'm looking at, I have a tensor value assigned to that point. Think of it like a tensor field defined in this coordinate system. Each coordinate, each point in the Rn space gives me a particular value of the contravariant tensor t. So in the end, we have a tensor T and a coordinate system x super i defined in an n-dimensional space on which that tensor is defined. Suppose that we now create a new coordinate system x super i bar, which I can express in terms of the original unbarred coordinate system. In order to transform the components t super i in the regular unbarred coordinate system to components t super i bar in the barred coordinate system, we need to use the following tensor transformation law. Note that r here is a dummy index that we sum over from 1 to n. It's repeated twice, so we sum over it. I'll call this transformation law equation 1. Now, we want to differentiate the tensor component of t with respect to some unbarred coordinate. That is, I want to find the rate of change of the tensor component as we change some unbarred coordinate. The purpose behind this differentiation is to answer the question, does this derivative transform like a tensor? If it did, that would mean if I change coordinates from the unbarred system to the barred system, the derivative of t super i bar with respect to the barred coordinate x super k could be written in terms of a tensor transformation law. After all, if some quantity is to be a tensor, then it must transform like a tensor via a corresponding tensor transformation law. But how do we even start with establishing a transformation law for the coordinate derivative of our tensor component? Well, we've got to find the derivative of equation 1 with respect to x super k bar and see where that takes us. So let's differentiate both sides of equation 1 with respect to x super k bar. We'll apply the product rule to the right-hand side to get the following, which I'm going to end up calling equation 2. Now let's work on this first term, the partial of the unbarred component with respect to the barred coordinate x super k bar. If we want to clean up this expression and make it more consistent, it actually helps if you think of the component t super r as some function of the unbarred coordinates x super 1, x super 2, etc., which is really what it is. And each of these x super 1, x super 2, etc., they're themselves functions of the barred coordinates because that's how you get the inverse transformation from the barred back to the unbarred coordinates. So I can write each of these x super 1, x super 2, etc. as functions of the barred coordinates x super 1 bar, x super 2 bar, all the way to x super n bar, with x super k bar also included somewhere in the input of these functions. So when you differentiate t super r with respect to the barred coordinate x super k, it's helpful to think of t super r as a function of all the unbarred coordinates in general, and each of those unbarred coordinates is a function of the barred coordinate of interest that we're differentiating with respect to, the x super k. And when you think of t super r this way, it's easy to compute its partial derivative with respect to x super k because we can just apply the chain rule. So the partial of t super r with respect to x super k bar is the partial with respect to x super 1 times the partial of x super 1 with respect to x super k bar plus the partial of t super r with respect to x super 2 times the partial of x super 2 with respect to x super k bar and so on. You can easily convert this right-hand side to a summation with the dummy index s that's on the unbarred coordinate. And then using Einstein notation, you can write this as the partial of t super r with respect to x super s times the partial of x super s with respect to x super k bar, where s is the dummy index that you're summing over. Again, we know it's a dummy index because it's repeated twice. It's one of the main rules of Einstein notation.
But what about the second term in the right-hand side of equation 2, the term that we're differentiating with respect to x super k bar that's in the parentheses? Well, just like with the unbar tensor component t super r, I can also write this term in the parentheses as some function f of the unbarred coordinates from x super 1 all the way till x super n. And just like what we said before, each of these unbarred coordinates is a function of the barred coordinates, with x super k bar also included in the input of these functions. So when you differentiate this function f with respect to x super k bar, you can find this derivative once again by applying the chain rule. You'll get the partial of f with respect to x super 1 times the partial of x super 1 with respect to x super k bar, plus partial f partial x super 2 times the partial of x super 2 with respect to x super k bar, and so on and so forth. Once again, you can simplify the right-hand side with Einstein notation to the following, using s as my dummy index once more. And now from equation 2, we can substitute f as the partial of x super i bar with respect to x super r. If we do that, the expression in the second term on the right-hand side becomes the following, which ultimately simplifies to the mixed partial of x super i bar with respect to x super s and x super r times the partial of x super s with respect to x super k bar. Finally, we'll plug all these expressions into the expression for our transformation law derivative. And ultimately, I will end up with an equation which I'm going to call equation 3. If I completely ignore this mixed partial derivative term on the right-hand side and set it to 0, then you can actually see that this partial derivative of a tensor component does transform like a tensor. In fact, if I ignore the mixed partial derivative term, this equation actually ends up being the transformation law of a mixed tensor of contravariant rank 1 and covariant rank 1. Now, let's go back to a previous video to talk about that mixed tensor. Remember that if I have a mixed tensor A of contravariant rank 1 and covariant rank 1, then its components denoted by A super i sub j, these components transform from the unbarred coordinates to the barred coordinates like so. If you compare this to equation 3 with the mixed partial set to 0, then you can see that as long as the mixed partial is 0, the partial derivative of our tensor component with respect to a coordinate transforms like a mixed tensor of contravariant rank 1 and covariant rank 1. As long as this mixed partial is 0 though, that's the key here. So let's take a step back and take a look at what happened with our differentiation of the tensor component with respect to the coordinate. By taking the derivative with respect to a coordinate of the component of our tensor T, we go from a contravariant rank 1 tensor, our tensor T, to a mixed tensor that has the contravariant rank but now also has a covariant rank. And again, this is only as long as our mixed partial derivative term is 0. I'll keep harping on this. So as long as our mixed partial is zero, differentiation of our contravariant tensor with respect to a coordinate has added to it a covariant rank. The addition of a covariant rank is why differentiating a tensor forms the foundation of covariant differentiation. That's why it's called covariant differentiation, because the action of taking a partial derivative of a tensor component with respect to a coordinate adds on a covariant rank to that tensor component hence covariant differentiation. But I should remind you that the covariant derivative of a tensor is not just the partial derivative of the component of the tensor with respect to the coordinate. It also contains other terms involving things like the Christoffel symbol, but I'll get to that in a future video. Now, I keep harping on the fact that if I want the partial derivative of my tensor component to transform like a tensor, I need this mixed partial derivative term to be zero. But it can't always be zero, so the question arises in what circumstances can it be zero, or is it zero? Let's talk about those circumstances. Say my coordinate transformation involves scaling the x super i coordinate system by a factor of k to end up with my barred coordinates. In that case, you can easily deduce that if I took the second partial of this barred coordinate with respect to the unbarred coordinates, I would actually end up with zero. You take the first partial and you'll get the constant k, and then you take the partial of that constant, you obviously get zero. In fact, even if x bar super i were some linear combination of all the unbarred coordinates, these second partial derivatives, these mixed partial derivatives, would again all be zero. 
Why is that? Well, similar idea. If my x bar super i was a linear combination of the unbarred coordinates, then the transformation equation would look something like this, where each coordinate in the barred reference frame is a constant times an unbarred coordinate plus another constant times another unbarred coordinate and so on. If I take the partial of this x bar super i with respect to some unbarred coordinate, I get the corresponding constant that's in front, but then if I take the partial of this first derivative with respect to some other unbarred coordinate, or even the same one for that matter, I get zero because the derivative of a constant is zero. We can actually use this logic to create this little simple rule. The simple derivative of a tensor component follows the transformation law of a tensor component when we have a linear coordinate transformation. Or if you remember a previous video, this is also called an affine coordinate transformation. This basically means a coordinate transformation like scaling up here or a linear combination like down here. In general, however, for more curvy linear coordinate transformations like going from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates, for instance, the derivative of a tensor component will not follow a tensor transformation law. It will not transform like a tensor because the mixed second partial term will be non-zero, which prevents us from reaching a transformation law in equation three. And speaking of equation three, I'll go back to it by copy pasting it here. Now, because this mixed second partial term throws such a huge wrench into establishing a tensor transformation law for the derivative of a tensor, we need some quantity to capture this term. And to establish that quantity, we need to talk about the Christoffel symbols, also known as the Christoffel symbols. Get it? No? Okay, never mind. So in the next video, I'm going to introduce the Christoffel symbols, and later I'm going to show how we can use the Christoffel symbols to absorb this mixed partial derivative term and end up with a quantity that involves the partial derivative of a tensor component. But now this quantity will ultimately, and without fail, transform like a tensor. Anyway, that should do it for this video. I'd like to thank the following patrons for their support, and if you enjoyed the lesson, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.